Druids first emerged from the cryptic mists of Sanctuary's history in Diablo II Lord of Destruction. But the true essence of the Druids, their deep-rooted ties to nature, and their transformative adaptability stretches back to ancient times, long before their debut in the Diablo games. These were more than shapeshifters, linked to the whims of nature. They were scholars, poets, and fierce warriors, followers of the teachings of Fjallagir, the first druid, and his profound bond with the land. Their resolve went beyond the personal. It flourished in their unity, because it was in the enigmatic forests of Skosglen amidst the mysterious call of wildlife and the tranquil rustling of leaves, that these clans discovered the power of nature, bound by a shared pledge, passed down through generations, to protect sanctuary from the forces of hell. The origins of the druids are steeped in legend, but their true cultural emergence can be traced back to the time of the ancients. These clans, shaped by the verdant wilderness of their homeland, were molded by the quiet strength of the towering trees and the ceaseless rhythm of the living world. Their wisdom grew, akin to a thriving grove, their commitment echoing the persistent ebb and flow of nature's cycle. Amidst the advancing storm of hell, they remained constant, unyielding. Guiding their path was a visionary leader, a figure of profound understanding, the Nephilim known as Fjallagir. We begin with Fjallagir, one of the ancients and the first druid in the Diablo universe. Born into the first generation of Nephilim in Sanctuary, Fjallagir was either a confidant or a younger sibling of Bulkathos, depending on the stories you read. Either way, Fjallagir had a strong bond with Bulkathos, sharing secrets of the ancients and the mysteries of Mount Ariat. Fjallagir and Bulkathos agreed on their sacred duty to protect these mysteries. They also foresaw dark times ahead and understood that their people must commit fully to this sacred trust. However, they had different views on how to achieve this. Bulgathos advocated for unity and martial discipline among the tribes, believing that strict training would ensure their commitment to the cause. He went on to unite the barbarian tribes. By the way, I have a video about Bulgathos and his story and the story of the barbarians. Go check it out. Link in the description. Fiak Laguerre, on the other hand, felt a deep connection to the land. He believed that by achieving a spiritual oneness with nature, their people would truly understand the importance of their role. Recognizing the merit in each other's philosophy, they took different paths. While Bulkathos united the tribes, Fiak Laguerre gathered the tribe's greatest warrior poets and shamans and retreated into the forest surrounding Skosglen. There, they founded the first of the Druid colleges. Fiak Laguer introduced his people to Koya Durwa, a way of thinking that holds harmony with the natural elements of the world, and prepared them for the conflicts that lay ahead. The history of Fiak Laguer and the early days of the Druid Order were eventually recorded in the Skjalfada, the sacred book of the Druids. It tells the story of a unique figure who forged his path following his affinity for nature, settling the foundation for the Druids and shaping their philosophy and mission for generations to come. Following Fjallagir's footsteps, the Druids established Dor Dorra in Skosglen, the first and greatest of many Druid colleges to come. This fortress is not just a building, it represents the heart of Druidic philosophy, a harmonious integration of architecture and natural elements. One such element stands tall within Tor Dorra, the magnificent oak tree, Glor and Faida. The tree is more than a natural feature. It serves as the principal source of the Druid's guidance and teachings. Under its expansive branches, generations of Druids own their unique blend of skills, combining powerful natural magic with martial abilities inherited from their barbarian ancestors. The practices of these Druids, both mystical and martial, are centered around this revered oak, embodying the Druids' deep reverence for nature. In the heart of Tuldurga, young Druids studied and honed their union with nature, working towards fulfilling the spiritual vision of Fjallagir. This tradition has been carried on for centuries, resulting in an unbroken chain of Druids dedicated to their sacred mission. The tower, the tree, the teachings, 
all intertwined in a singular representation of Druidic philosophy. Tur Durga thus emerges as an embodiment of the Druids' commitment to a natural harmony and martial prowess, a testament to their enduring legacy. Our next chapter of the Druidic lore unfolds during the dark period known as Yulaloskat Mor. This was a time of severe strife, a cataclysmic event that tested the resolve of the Druids and their sacred commitment to sanctuary. During their years of seclusion, the Druids prepared for this looming conflict. Through the teachings of Kuid Duroha, they learned to bond with the natural entities of sanctuary. Their connection was so profound that they acquired the ability to communicate with plants and animals, to summon sentient beings from the earth, and even to control the weather to some extent. As the darkening of Tristam marked the beginning of Yulilus Kedmor, the Druids saw the signs of the final conflict at hand. Demonic forces surged, corrupting creatures of nature into a perversion of the very beings they had sworn to protect. These alarming events stirred the Druids from their seclusion, pushing them into an open conflict with the minions of chaos. One Druid returned to the Northern Steppes to aid in Harrogath's defense. That's you in Diablo II Lord of Destruction, by the way. This brave Druid, alongside a group of heroes, took on Baal, the Lord of Destruction. Their effort resulted in victory, but not without a great loss, the World Stone. While this significant battle occurred, the rest of the Druids stood their ground in their homeland, defending against Baal's forces. The aftermath of Yulilusked Mor led to considerable changes in the Druidic order. In response to the destruction and the escalating threats to Sanctuary, the Druids had to adapt and prepare for an era marked by an uncertainty and the impeding threat of chaos. The fourth chapter sees the Druid order plunged into an era of discord and conflict, the period known as the Reign of Enmity. This was a time of great turmoil within the Order, marked by internal strife and external threats. In the decades following Malthael's defeat, the Druids faced relentless challenges. The Khazra feral beast devoid of mercy rampaged across Skosglen, taking lives and sowing fear among the populace. The once peaceful land was marred by violence, as farmers and townsfolk fell prey to the marauding Khazra, often within a stone's throw from their homes. The people huddled together, seeking safety in numbers, but their attempts were in vain. Stepping outside the bonds of civilization, they found themselves lost and besieged by these savage creatures. Yet, even in these dark times, there were efforts for peace and unity. Some druids sought to heal the internal rifts and restore harmony to the Order, acting as beacons of hope in the bleak landscape. The return of Lilith, the First Mother, marked another turn of the wheel in the saga of the druids. With chaos trailing in her wake, a druid steps forward. That's you in Diablo 4. Ready to confront her and halt the impeding disaster she heralds. Thus, the druids find themselves at the forefront of a new conflict, ready to defend Sanctuary once more. The druid class could strike a chord with you if you're drawn to nature embrace adaptability, and seek harmony in your surroundings. Druids, recognized for their affinity with natural elements and the sentient beings of Sanctuary, might reflect your spirit if you value environmental kingship. Originating from Skosglen's dense forests, Druids embody a profound bond with nature. They strive to achieve spiritual oneness with the land they are vowed to protect. If you hold deep reverence for the natural world and its inhabitants, their philosophy might echo your own. The Druids' abilities highlight their transformative nature. Owned over centuries, they learn to share strengths with their animal brethren, summon sentient plants, and even manipulate the weather. If you admire these traits and see them as metaphors for adaptability and change in your own life, the journey of a Druid could align with your past. Choosing the Druid class means embracing their deep-seated history, their challenges, and their unyielding devotion to sanctuary. If you regard your commitment to your values as unwavering, no matter the obstacles, the Druid's narrative of steadfast duty and adaptation could resonate with your own life experience. As we part ways from the tales of the Druids, let us not forget their enduring legacy. But what lies ahead in the grand scheme of the eternal conflict? 
What further trials and tribulations await the Druids in the face of Lilith's return? And you, the wanderer on this journey, where will you fit in this tale that's still being written? Will you take up the mantle of a Druid and shape the future of Skullsglen and beyond? Hey, welcome to the end of the video where you get some behind the scenes on the video itself and on the channel. First of all, thank you so much for spending time with me, listening to the video, watching the video. I, I really appreciate it. Uh, if you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe because I've got lots more content in the same style. So if this is something you think you'll like, make sure to hit that subscribe button. So this video is actually quite tough to make because there's uh, a certain amount of information out there and it's not a plethora. So I tried to write a good script, but also not drag it, you know, trying to hit that 10 minute mark is just useless if your content isn't good uh, and to the point in, in a way. So I tried to do that. And also one thing with the Druids is they have so many words steeped in uh, Irish folklore and culture. And so they're quite hard to pronounce. So whenever I had to say a new word like Fjallagar or Yulilosgal something, I would put the word on screen um, just to make sure that people could understand what I was trying to say, because it's not that easy. And it's not like there's a pronunciation guide out there for these words. So I had to kind of do my best uh, with what I had. Anyway, thank you again so much for watching the video. The channel now has 200 subscribers, which is insane. So thank you so much. Uh, yeah, thanks. We'll see you in the next one.